now in our service uh, to the opportunity we have to baptize three individuals and welcome them into membership. Like Pastor Andrew was saying earlier, baptism is a wonderful opportunity where, where they have the chance to proclaim that they are turning, these people are turning from their sins and trusting in Christ. They are proclaiming that spiritual reality. They are showing that they are identified with Christ. So, so this is a wonderful opportunity that we have to participate or to watch this. But I'd also encourage you to be encouraged as you see this, because this is a beautiful picture of the spiritual reality that we, uh, we have been dead. We, we've been killed in a spiritual sense. Um, we are made alive, rather. We, we've been buried like Christ and raised to newness of life. So if you are in Christ, I hope that you are encouraged as you are reminded that this spiritual reality is true of you. So, um, Owen, would you come on up? Good morning. My name is Owen Holdeman. When I was about four or five, I would pray and ask to be saved because my parents had taught me that in order to go to heaven, I had to repent from my sin and ask Jesus for a fresh and clean heart. I wanted to go to heaven and not go to hell. A few years later, I understood more clearly that I was a sinner who needed a savior and that Jesus was that savior. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. No matter how hard I tried to obey, I kept on sinning. I also understood that I deserved God's judgment. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. I believe Jesus died on the cross to give me freedom from my sins and rose from the dead to give me eternal life with him. I would often pray and ask God to make it clear if I was or wasn't saved. I was a quote-unquote good boy who didn't get into trouble as much, and I knew that if I were saved, I would want to be obedient, so it was hard for, for me to tell if I was saved or not. Matthew 7:17 7, says, Even so every good tree bears good fruit, and every bad tree bears bad fruit. I kept on wondering if I was a good tree or a bad tree. I often asked my parents right before bedtime how to know if someone is truly saved. This went on for a couple of years. Then when I was 10, my dad and I were in the car talking about Romans 10:9 that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart, God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. He also reminded me that Jesus said he would not turn away anyone who comes to him, according to John 6:37. He also encouraged me to stop questioning my salvation and start believing God's promises. After thinking about this, I decided to believe that God had either saved me then or before. Once I chose to trust and rest in what Christ has done for me, I notice evidence of God's saving grace in my life. I want to obey my parents, not just to avoid discipline, but because Jesus commands me to. And I want to show him thankfulness with my obedience. I have also had the desire and opportunity to share the gospel with neighbors. The band Casting Crowns says, I'm just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody who saved my soul. There are many times that I am reading my Bible and I just can't stop because it's really good. This also happens when I'm reading regular books as well, but I'm fighting to keep my desire for God's word a priority and joy. Two of my favorite verses are John 4:35, Behold, I say to you, lift up your eyes and look at the fields, for they are white with harvest. And Isaiah 1:18, Come, let us reason together, says the Lord, for though your sins are like scarlet, they will be like snow, and though they are like crimson, they will be like wool. In closing, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that is not of yourself, it is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that no man may boast. I want to be baptized today, not to secure my salvation, because Jesus already did that for me. I simply want to obey him out of gratitude for what he's done. All right. Based on your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, Holy Spirit. Just make sure you speak into the mic. All right. 
Should I squat? Uh, you can stand if you'd like. Okay. <clears throat> Hello, everyone. My name is Ben Kazal, and I would like to share my testimony with all of you today. I was born and raised in a strong, loving Christian home. My dad was a pastor who even started and led his own church in California for many years. I had a very large amount of head knowledge as I attended all the sermons and watched every episode of VeggieTales. <laughs> but I never really knew the importance of the gospel and the depth that the Bible has. Moving to another part of California and finding a new church was not easy, as I missed my friends and my dad was no longer the pastor. But little did I know that moving would provide me a real relationship with the Lord. As I began to get more plugged into my youth group and I made many lifelong friends, I began to see my growth even more. In summer of 2021, I attended a summer biblical worldview camp where I sat down with my small group leader, Oliver. He began to explain the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and how much I needed to repent for my life of sin. It was at this moment where I truly felt convicted because I realized that I had never had a moment where I asked for my father to save me and make me one of his children. I told him that and he said, right now is no better time to be saved. So when he left the table, I prayed a prayer of salvation, meaning I repented to God for my sins and I placed my security and trust in Christ because he is holy and perfect. From that day on, I can say that my confidence is that in Christ and his death, burial, and resurrection. I was on fire for the Lord after World V Camp, but shortly after I got distracted and too focused on the things going on in my life, like friend drama, selfishness, and moving to Arizona. Moving away was extremely difficult for me, being six hours away from my girlfriend, my friends, my old church, my gym, and the beach was not easy. But I truly know that the Lord used it for my own good. He matured me and made me grow into a stronger, more confident man. He has provided me with a wonderful education and career path, an amazing new church where I am surrounded with wonderful, like-minded people. And he has opened up to me in his words so much through the last year. I can really see God working in me through this move, and I cannot wait to serve in this church. I aspire to be on the worship team and in the distant future lead worship, as I love to play the guitar, and I'm learning how to sing. I cannot thank God, and I cannot thank God my mom and dad, my siblings, my girlfriend, my mentors, and my friends enough for being there for me and helping me grow closer to God, and I can say that I live every day with the joy of the Lord. <clears throat> in your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hi, my name is Christina. By God's grace, I grew up at a Christian home with Christian parents, going to church regularly. Unfortunately, in the church of my early childhood, the gospel was not taught. They did not take, talk about the depravity of sinful human heart, nor sin separating us from God. My earliest memories are of everyone around me talking and th saying that being a Christian was a good thing and it could all be yours if you just prayed this prayer. There was never any mention of repentance of sin nor turning from sin, putting off sin and putting on holiness through the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. I remember at age four, I thought wrongly that if I claimed to be a Christian, it would, it would cost me nothing be like a feather in my cap, and I could live however I wanted, or as much as a four-year could live how she wanted. With this profession of faith, I was still not a Christian because there was no fruit. All through grade school, I thought I was a Christian, but my, religi my religiosity consisted of a collection of do's and don'ts that led me to believe wrongly that I was mo more holy than I was, and God is less was less holy than he is, but I was still not saved. In junior high, I came, went to a camp called Unmasking the Pretender, 
and it was for the first time that I thought it was possible that I was not saved. If I had gleaned anything from growing up in the church, it was that non-Christians went to hell and Christians went to heaven. I did not want to go to hell, so I asked Jesus into my heart, but I was still not saved, and this did not take away the fear of hell. One night after evening service, I prayed a prayer, and the turmoil and fear of hell went away, but there was no desire to study the Bible nor to examine my heart nor to put off sin and put on holiness through the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. Therefore, I was still not saved. My class moved through junior high, high school, into college and ministry, serving in various ministries connected to the college ministry, but I was still not saved. In 2016, I volunteered for games crew at a high school camp. Halfway through camp, I gave the amen in my heart and mind to the gospel I thought I knew. I was not looking for God. I thought I was saved. Salvation is by grace. Is, salvation is nothing I did to get, keep, earn, or pay God back through for my salvation. Now I see change. Now I have a desire to study the Bible, to put off sin, and put on holiness through the transforming work of the Holy Spirit. Because of the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. Ephesians 2, verses 8 and 9. For by grace you have been saved through faith, not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, so that no one may boast. You're doing great. All right. Based on your profession of faith, I now baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Okay. I hope you are as as I am to be reassured that the Lord is still doing a work. He is still saving people. He is still building his church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. So uh, join me as I close in prayer. Father, again, we're so thankful that uh, this is a testimony, a testament to your faithfulness. Thank you for these three people. Uh, thank you for the work that you've done in their life. We pray, Lord, that you would continue to help them and us together grow um, more and more in your likeness, grow to reflect you, and like Pastor Andrew said, grow uh, in, in how we speak, that, that even the way that we speak would be uh, for your honor and glory. So we love you and thank you for all that you do. In Christ's name, amen. You are loved and dismissed.